Hi everyone, this lesson is on carpal tunnel syndrome. So we're going to talk about what causes this condition. We're also going to talk about the signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition involving impingement or the entrapment of the median nerve in the wrist. So the median nerve runs through the wrist and in this condition, the median nerve gets impinged or compressed. It is the most common entrapment neuropathy, and its epidemiology shows that females far outnumber males, and the ratio is approximately 10 to 1. So for every one male that is affected by this condition, 10 females are affected by this condition. The onset of this condition occurs most often between the ages of 40 to 60, but it can occur at other times of life, and it occurs most commonly in Caucasian populations. Now, we mentioned this before, but the pathophysiology of carpal tunnel syndrome is, again, where the median nerve becomes compressed in the carpal tunnel. So the carpal tunnel is the area in the wrist where the median nerve runs through, and this is why it's called carpal tunnel syndrome. And the reason it becomes compressed, the reason that the median nerve becomes compressed or impinged is because of bony growth in that area or soft tissue proliferation. So again, the bones in this area of the wrist increase in size or there's a part of them that increases in size to lead to compression of the median nerve or there is soft tissue in that area that grows or swells and that could also push or impinge on the median nerve. And then what this does is that it affects median nerve functioning and the median nerve is responsible for the sensation of the part of the hand shown here in blue. So this is going to be a very important diagram to remember because it's going to help us with the signs and symptoms of this condition. So the median nerve is responsible for sensation of the area of the hand noted here in blue. So half of the palm, the half closest to the thumb, and then the sensation of the thumb, the forefinger, the middle finger, and then half of the ring finger. And it's the half of the ring finger that is closest to the middle finger. So this is going to be very important in understanding the signs and symptoms of this condition. Now let's talk about the risk factors for getting carpal tunnel syndrome. And then we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms. So number one is going to be family history. So we mentioned before that certain populations are more susceptible to getting this condition. So if you have a family history of this condition, say your parent has this condition, you're more likely to also get this condition yourself. So there is a genetic predisposition. And a very important second risk factor is a history, oftentimes a long history, of repetitive hand movements and activities. So one example might be typing on a keyboard. So individuals who have long histories of repetitive hand movements, whether that be typing on a keyboard, cleaning, or some other activity where they're using their hands repetitively, they're at an increased risk for getting carpal tunnel syndrome as well. Obesity is another risk factor. So you can imagine that if there's more tissue in that area surrounding the median nerve, that could lead to impingement or compression of the median nerve. Rheumatoid arthritis is also another risk factor. So there can be bony changes in the area and that can lead to compression of the median nerve as well. Pregnancy can also increase the risk of carpal tunnel syndrome. This can partially explain the reason why females are more at risk or more likely to get carpal tunnel syndrome. Acromegaly is another condition that is associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. Acromegaly leads to growth of tissue in particular areas of the body. Some of those include the hand and the wrist. So soft tissue in the wrist can grow and proliferate in acromegaly, leading to compression of the median nerve. Hypothyroidism, which is a low thyroid functioning, can also cause carpal tunnel syndrome. So hypothyroidism can cause swelling in the extremities. So the wrist can be affected by that swelling and that can lead to compression of the median nerve. And then scleroderma, the condition of scleroderma is a condition where there's collagen deposition and this can cause compression of the median nerve as well. Now let's talk about the clinical features of carpal tunnel syndrome. It all has to do with symptoms occurring in the wrist, hands, and fingers, and it has all to do with this diagram again. So it's very important to note where the median nerve is responsible for sensation. So oftentimes patients are going to have pain, numbness and tingling sensations, which is known as paresthesias. So these are going to occur in the median nerve distribution. So they're going to occur in the palm, the thumb, 
the forefinger, the middle finger, and then half of the ring finger. And oftentimes you're going to have that pain, numbness, and tingling sensation in the fingers most often. So the thumb, the forefinger, middle finger, and then half of the ring finger closest to the middle finger. And then the other half of the ring finger is not going to be affected. So if you were to actually touch this area, that half of the ring finger closest to the middle finger, there's going to be numbness. But if you touch the other half, it could be normal because that part of the hand is supplied by the ulnar nerve. And then what's also noted in carpal tunnel syndrome is that symptoms often occur or increase at nighttime. So patients might have issues during the day, especially when they're doing repetitive activities. And then they're going to note that their symptoms are going to be worse at night. So these are going to be the main clinical features of carpal tunnel syndrome, but there's going to be some other signs and symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome as well. These include hand and finger flicking, which is known as the flick sign. So patients are going to shake or flick their hand and fingers, and they're going to do that because they find that their symptoms improve when they do that. So by flicking their hand, their fingers, and their wrists, they find that their symptoms improve. Patients will often note temperature changes in their fingers as well. There can be hand and finger weakness. So if the nerve supply to those parts of the hand are affected, there can be issues with hand and finger weakness. And this is going to lead to muscle atrophy or muscle wasting. And one area in particular that can be affected by this muscle atrophy is the thenar eminence. The thenar eminence is located right here. This is the fleshier part of the thumb. And in carpal tunnel syndrome, we can see this is decreased. This muscle mass decreases or it's atrophied and we call this thenar eminence atrophy. So this can also be found in some patients with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now that we know the clinical features of carpal tunnel syndrome, how do clinicians diagnose and treat this condition? Clinicians diagnose this condition oftentimes by clinical diagnosis. So by history and physical examination, they often make the diagnosis. So along with those signs and symptoms we talked about before, where there is numbness and tingling sensation in the median nerve distribution area, clinicians can also perform other clinical tests that can reaffirm or support the diagnosis. These include the carpal compression test. So the carpal compression test is where the clinician will hold and compress the area of the wrist where the median nerve runs through. And if they reproduce the numbness and tingling and pain that the patient experiences, that is a positive carpal compression test. Clinicians can also perform what is known as the Tenel sign. So Tenel sign is where a clinician will tap on the area of the wrist where the median nerve runs through. And when the clinician taps on that area, if the patient has numbness and tingling sensation in the area of the median nerve distribution, again, the thumb, forefinger, middle finger, and half the ring finger, that is a positive Tenel sign. So again, clinicians will tap on this area where the median nerve runs through, and that is called the Tenel sign, tapping for the Tenel sign. And then the other clinical test that can be performed is known as the Phelan sign. So the Phelan sign is also referred to as inverted prayer. So it's essentially where the clinician gets the patient to hold their hands like this, and they push together, essentially compressing the median nerve in both hands. If they do this for 60 seconds and they reproduce their symptoms, then that is a positive Phelan sign. So if you want more information on these clinical tests, please check out my lesson on how to do these clinical tests. And then the standardized or more official way to diagnose this is by nerve conduction studies. So nerve conduction studies to see the functioning of the median nerve. And when this has been diagnosed, how is it treated? Oftentimes, conservative treatments are started. So some of them include weight loss. As I mentioned before, obesity can cause compression of the median nerve. So weight loss can be important. There can be some relief with ice. So ice can be placed on the area and that can help relieve some of those symptoms. And then rest is also beneficial. We talked about those repetitive behaviors or repetitive actions of the hands often worsen the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. And that is also another important note to make is that patients will often be advised to decrease or avoid those same repetitive actions. A night splint can also be used. So at night, a patient can put on a splint like this. And as we mentioned before, the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome are worse at night. So putting on a night splint can help with these symptoms. And then hand ergonomics are also important as well. And then for surgical options, there is a surgery known as a carpal tunnel release. And this will essentially release the compression on the median nerve allowing for the median nerve to function properly. So that is the carpal tunnel release and that 
often is very beneficial for patients who have this condition. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.